Good. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> what if we can do something? Uh, <clears throat> When I was at Sedona, I met a guy who was into Plato's Republic. <clears throat> and uh, much to my surprise, uh, he was a good reader. And uh, He said, you know what? That whole discussion in the Republic on arithmetic doesn't make any literal sense. Anyone have a copy of Plato? We need two readers. Want to play? Want to see something curious? <clears throat> Another copy? Anyone else? Republic? Republic. Got one right there. No, that's no Republic in this one. Oh. I don't oh. believe so. Oh, wow. Wow. Amazing. I got out right. of your, your book. Oh, really? Ah, good. Oh, my God. Hey, let's get two readers and come up and try it. When was this transferred? All right, let's act it out. I'll be a reader. I can take a page. Yeah, the substitute Come on up. He's volunteering. I'm going grab a chair. You can read talk. <laughs> Am I taking this book? I think so. Where are you starting it? Good. Do you see whether you can pick it up from there? Sure. You send Look here. Sense. Let, let me Page first give you the question. The All right. at, least I said, <clears throat> at least I said. At least I said. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanus. Not Stephanus. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Stephanus. Um, Five twenty-two. At least I said. Okay. Go. Okay. At least I said. Oh. What would you say is the goal for arithmetic? Like, why do it? The ultimate nature of reality. The what? The ultimate? Nature of reality. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, it means reality. that... I mean, anything beyond it, or is that... <clears throat> it means that... Well, you, well, you asked I'll the question, I answered it. Nature of reality. Okay. Ultimate. Anyone else? 
Mike, why does he have that question, whether after all is the one who saw, so what? What's his goal? To figure out what it is. What, what? To, to figure out what a one and the one is. One being, For what I guess end? you can't figure out what the one is, right? You For, what end? What... For what end? <clears throat> to bring the soul back to source. To bring the soul, to bring, to go back. Reversion. Okay, someone else? I'll take that as well. I have a feeling we're all going to be wrong now. I have a feeling we're all going to be wrong now. Because <laughs> I liked your answer so much. In other words, it looks like you will all agree uh, it has nothing to do with the one itself. Do you mean as in number? Or as That's in... All. Okay, just that we agree. Or as in... Uh, yeah, well... So like this can... friend of mine in Sedona, he said, the question should be, what after all is being a self or reality? Mm -hmm. He's got the wrong question. Does he already presuppose that the one is beyond yeah, sure. is that logos? Is his question? He said, you're the Sedona guys and really Yeah, he said, yeah. The guy said, yeah, he got the wrong question. But it should, should be, uh, what after all is being a self? Yeah, good, good. But doesn't that point from the second to the first hypothesis? I mean, if I understand. What, what, what's this? If I understand what you're unfolding, it's that the one itself is going to be, is going to be beyond all predicates, right? So to ask the question, what is the one in itself? You have to be able to say something about that answer. So you're going to automatically be going away from that about which something can be said. Oh, so he's got the wrong question. No, he has the right question well, pointing to the highest since, point. Since you can't answer this, you go for the next one, which should be <laughs> the nature of reality. No, okay. Yeah, that's one of the reasons you can't really consider this author too seriously. <laughs> Right? I mean, just a... The one is that about which nothing can be said, right? It's beyond, it's, it's understood only through negatives. So if you ask, what is the one itself? Then I would imagine that a person who's asking that question already understands that it's going to be beyond all, uh, only understood so through then negatives. So he's going to answer another question. I guess that would be the... Yeah. Sloppy thinker. Yeah. Right. I don't know if I agree with the conclusion, okay. but... Okay, that's the first point he made, right? But the second is that in the sequence of steps, There's no connection between several of them, and therefore it's illegitimate. So let's just go, go through it. Okay. To find his illegitimate reasoning. At least I said, uh, Pal Palamides, in the, play, in the plays is always making out Agamemnon to be a perfectly ridiculous general. Haven't you noticed that uh, Palamides claims to have invented number? And with this arranged, the ranks in the encampment before Troy, 
and counted the ships and everything else as if they had not been counted before. And as if before this, Agamemnon did not know how many feet he had, as it seems if he really could not count, then what sort of general do you think he was? Odd enough, if that was true. Then shall we not put down this as a study necessary for a soldier to be able to calculate and count? Nothing more so. If he is to understand anything at all about his own ranks, or rather, if he is to even, if he is to be even anything of a man. I wonder if you notice what I do about this study. And what may that be? It is really one of those we are looking for, those which lead naturally to thinking, but no one uses it rightly, although it draws wholly towards real being. What do you mean? Oh, I'll try to explain uh, what it, at least I believe. Um, whatever points I distinguish in my own mind as leading in favor of or against what we are speaking of, pray look at them with me and agree or disagree. Then we shall see more clearly if this study is what I divine it to be. Do indicate them. That's what I'm doing. If you observe some things which the senses perceive do not invite the intelligence to examine them because they seem to be judged satisfactorily by the senses. But some altogether urge it to examine them because the sense appears to produce no sound result. Obviously, you mean things seen from a distance or in shadow drawing. You haven't caught my point quite yet. Then what do you mean? I mean by those which do not invite thought. All of those which do not pass from one cessation to its opposite at the same time. Those that do I put down as inviting thought, that is, when the sensation shows two opposites equally, whether its impact comes from near or from far. I can explain what I mean more clearly. These are three fingers, we say, little finger, and second and middle. Just so. Suppose that I speak of them as seen close by. Just ask yourself, please. What? Each of them appears to be equally a finger, and in this respect there is no difference whether the one seen is in the middle or on the outside, whether it is white or black, thick or thin, and so forth. In all of these things, the soul of most, <laughs> of most men is not forced to call on thought and ask, what is a finger? For the sight does not signal to it at all that the, finger, that, that the finger is the opposite of a finger. No, indeed. Then isn't it likely that such a case would invite or arouse thought? Not at all likely. Very good. What of their bigness and smallness? Does the sight see these adequately and does it make no difference to it that one is in the middle or on the outside? Thickness or thinness again and softness or hardness? Does the touch feel these surely enough? So with the other senses, are they not also defective in what they show? Or rather what happens is this. In the first place, the sensation which is appointed to judge the hard must also be appointed to judge the soft, also be appointed over the soft. And as it goes on feeling, it reports to the soul that the same thing is both hard and soft. Just so. Then isn't it necessary that the soul is puzzled? as to what indeed the sensation signifies to it by hard 
if it says the same thing as soft. And so with the feeling of light and heavy, what light or heavy means, if the sensation declares the heavy light and the light heavy. Really, these explanations are queer for the soul and need examination. It is likely then that in such cases the soul first calls in calculation and reasoning and tries to examine whether one or two things are reported to it each time. Uh, of course. It appears to be two then. Each appears to be distinct from the other and one. Yes. And if each appears to be one and both uh, together two, it will conceive of the two as separate because they are two. Or else it would have conceived of one, not two, if they were inseparable. Mm, quite right. Sight again, saw big and small. We say, but as something compounded, not separate. Don't you agree? Yes. But on the other hand, to make this something clear, as in fact big and small, reason was compelled to see it not as compounded, but as separate. The opposite of what sight saw. Mm, true. So, from beginning like this, we first think of asking the question, what, after all, is bigness and smallness? Undoubtedly. And that you know is how, and that you know, is how we came to call one thing a thing of the mind and another a thing of sight. Quite right. Then this is what I was trying to say just now when I said that some things provoke thought and some do not. I distinguished as provocative of thought those which bring their opposites with them. One may fall upon the senses, and as not awaking the intelligence, all such as do not bring in their opposites. I understand you at last, and think so too. Very good. Where does number belong? And the one. What, what, which class? I have no notion. Start from what has been already said he and reason it out. He has no out. notion of what? Of which class? You put what in? The one. Very good. Which class does number? Number or the one? And the one. And both. Whether it it's both? the thought or provocative of thought. What's his puzzle? Hmm. Is it both? Is there any? Okay, just a minor point. Go ahead. Start from what has been said already and reason it out. If the one is sufficiently seen in itself and by itself, or if it is sufficiently apprehended by any other sense, it could not draw towards real being. <clears throat> uh, as we described in the case of the finger. But if some opposite is always seen along with it so that it appears to be no more than the opposite, at once it will
Look. What, after all, is the one itself, right? First of all, would you agree? <clears throat> you ask that question and you end up presumably with an insight into being, turns the mind around to being. It's not a question about what is the nature of being. You go, what's the one? Itself, what's the one itself? Oh, then you get an answer that has nothing to do directly with the question. Oh, you get an insight into being. Well, that was very helpful. You still have the question then, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's assume that's true, okay? That's the way to get insight into being, is to ask a question that has nothing to do with being directly, but you'll be led by some curious reasoning about the one itself and land into an experience called being. But what, okay, how does that relate to bigness and smallness? As he dare. Well, is it, is, I'm going to offer this which seems obvious in order that we can advance. Um, <laughs> isn't, isn't the point that when you look at your fingers and you're trying to tell what is a finger, right, that the fact that some appear bigger or smaller in relationship to one another, and you don't really know whether they are bigger or smaller in any reality, so you have to ask what is big nest and what is small nest because it might be bigger than one finger, smaller than another finger, and that might be because they're on the outside of the hand, not on the inside of the hand. And so isn't, isn't, doesn't it drive you to say, what are these things that can admit in trying to discern what the truth is about my finger or the reality is about my finger? I have to then explore what is the nature of big nest and small nest. Outside of the finger. Yeah, outside of the finger. Which is why I brought up Idea. Right. And Is that right? Okay. The language that deals with judgments of perception makes <laughs> distinctions which are always relative. Mm -hmm. right. Fingers. Oh. This is bigger. Yeah, this is bigger. Uh oh, it's smaller. Oh. That's both big and small then. I'm making relative judgments about perception. Mm. So now, notice what he's saying. He said, you know what? You now have to ask what is so... Right, so you ask about... What is bigness and smallness? Because the same thing is both big and small at the same time. You ask about the nesses. Yeah. Smallness. Now, when you're in this class of judgments, it's a, it's not relative anymore but you're always involved in its opposites, right? These, 
You're always involved when you're thinking about this, you're thinking about this. Is that true? Well, because you have Let's to try have, it. It's relative, right? You have to okay. have the comparison. Come, try it. Make his judgment about using the word smallness. Or let's just raise it to greatness. The judgment will be smallness ain't greatness. <laughs> That's not fair. I didn't, come on. I didn't, <laughs> He's saying, come on, if you I, deal with one, the other one is dragged along with you. <laughs> when? What's, did you say, you said always. I didn't quite hear his question to what you were answering. Can you, what's dragged along, all the nesses? Look, just give me this sentence with the word greatness or smallness, that's all. Excellent. Michael Jordan is great. Pardon me? Michael Jordan is great. He exemplifies greatness. Greatness. Oh, yeah, he, he not great. He, Michael Jordan was one of the... Uh, Exemplifies uh, greatness. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Exemplified greatness in basketball. Okay, everyone satisfied with that? <laughs> or Plato exemplified greatness in philosophy. Did it involve in your judgment smallness? No. Then it's, then it's fishy. No, no. It, 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 it then involved it then it poorness, matter. the opposite or, of greatness. Or, these, or, or smallness isn't drug along, right? Like it's standalone. Oh. Like, do you have to have the idea of not greatness in order to determine greatness? Is that my, is that the question? Because in, in the ion, right, you have to, in, if you have an art, you have to be able to determine both the good and the bad within that art. So if you can say that Michael Jordan was great at basketball or he exemplifies greatness, then you're going to be able to also determine all the people who didn't. If there are a class of things you're willing to call great, whatever it is, can you say they share in greatness? In some way, yes. Participate? So that's a participation problem. But if there are great things and you want to say, what is it that made each of them great? What are you looking for? The commonality among all the great things, that's greatness. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a standard or measure, right? Right. Or putting a name on that commonness. Of that commonness. All right. Yes. By the way, did I have to use the idea of smallness? No, no. No, you had to use the idea of greatness. But all messes. So what's the conclusion? You don't bring it along? If I make a judgment about this, if I make a judgment about A, does that assume I'm able to separate out things that are not great? Yes. Mm -hmm. If they are not only not great, but I can also judge uh, 
Ah, let me write it down. I can also judge things that lack any degree of being great. If I'm doing this, am I not involved with smallness? You're involved with every nest, right? Like, could I say that someone is great if I have no idea of the other extreme? Wait a minute. Go a step further now. <laughs> right? <laughs> you would just say B, right? That means you're clear about A, and that means you can separate great from non great. Wait a minute. Suppose we add. It's not only a negative case, but they lack to any degree of being great, then what do you have? Opposite. Have the opposite. Ah, ah. Oh. See, the problem is English. I have a friend of mine who studied English. And, uh, he offered a new rule for the study of English to put in kids' grammar. And uh, <clears throat> uh, he wanted to put this in wherever it belongs, such as if there are if there are some great acts of being just, should you not say then they share in justness? Forget I C E, that forget those words, those mm -hmm. suffixes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Stick in ness. The I C E is ness, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Coward cowardice, cowardness. Right. So wait a minute. Now that we have just this, yeah. would you say that's equally true about beauty, beautiful things? Yes, beauty, ness, beautiful. Anything full is ness. Same. Right. We're going to preserve same. the ness, the suffix. Yeah. Oh, oh. And if that's the case, then it means that going, I'm going to have to be able to do this. Yeah. Mm, judge. It's opposite. <clears throat> So therefore, if anyone's going to talk about justness, they have to talk about injusticeness, right? It carries it along, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? Mm. Ah, ah, ah. By the way, what does this do? Right? What does this do? To whatever you put in here, quality. What the hell is that? Mean? Quality. It, it's that. It gives it existence. Quality. I'm uh, always agreeing. I mean, it's a like, quality. This it, it, it well. First of all, there's the distinction between that. Yeah, qual. What'd you say? Quality. What? What'd you say? I said it gives it existence. Who, who wants to help? I was saying it gives it existence. Pardon? Speak up, Robert. It gives it, it gives it existence. Oh. 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 So now, hey, wait a minute. You're moving to existence. Yeah, I mean, because like if you look oh. at many beautiful things, right? They Nest, all have. Nest leads to what? What again? Existence. Oh, E-N-C-E. -E. What Existence-ness. 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 
<laughs> exactly. Right? Existness. Oh, what does it do? What does Ness do? It pushes. What's another word for this thing? Being. Reality. Being. Being. Reality. Oh. So, are, are we saying that being with the Ness, it has to be fundamentally different than the idea itself, which came before it, which produces it? It's divine being. Divine being and divine being ness are going to be two different things. Correct? It brings it up to a level of divinity. Yeah. Right, but being, I guess my question is, is like the ness is always going to make it then separate from the idea itself, like beauty ness versus beauty itself. One ness versus the one. Okay. Is this the proper word for the ness? Because existence can be the everyday world. He's talking about the essence. Yeah, essence. Right, we're talking yeah. about the essence right. of existence. Right. What word do we need? Being. 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 With a capital B. Ness. Being Ness with a capital B. <laughs> ah. Capital B. Yeah, well, capital B. That's because we're not using Ness. According to my friend's new rule in the English language, forget that capitals I, stick in Ness where it belongs. I want to be added to your list of friends because I also am an English teacher. So, well, well, mm. next committee, I'll be invited. Look, we now have to change this, see? being Ness, right? Mm -hmm. To keep it going. Mm -hmm. Sure. Ah. Ah. Let's see what he does now from this point. So watch the way he shifts. Okay, go ahead. Go further. <clears throat> but surely an opposite is just what the one especially has when it is examined by sight. For we can at the same time see the same thing, both as one and as an infinite number. Mm -hmm. Then, if that is true of one, the same happens with all number. Of course. But the science of numbers, the art of numbers, and the art of calculation are wholly concerned with numbers. Undoubtedly. Number then appears to lead towards the truth. That is abundantly clear. Then, as it seems, this would be one of the studies we seek. For this is necessary for the soldier to learn because of arranging his troops and for the philosopher because he must rise up out of the world of becoming and lay hold of real being or he will never become a reckoner. Contemplator? That is true. Again, our guardian is really both soldier wow, and philosopher. Certainly. And then, my dear Glaucon, it is proper to lay down that study by law and to persuade those who are to share in the highest things in the city to go for and to tackle the art of calculation and not as amateurs. They must keep hold of it until they are led to contemplate the very nature of numbers by thought alone. Practicing it not for the purpose of buying and selling like merchants or hucksters, but for war and for the soul itself. To make easier the change from the world of becoming to real being and truth. Excellently said. And besides, it comes into my mind now, the study of calculations has been mentioned. How refined that is and how useful it to us in many ways for what we want, if it is followed for the sake of knowledge and not for chaffering. Uh, how so? Bartering. Ch bartering, thank you. Uh, in this way, 
as we said just now, how it leads the soul forcibly. It's interesting, forcibly, right? Up the forced into some upper region and compels it to debate about numbers in themselves. It nowhere accepts any account of numbers as having tacked onto them bodies which can be seen or touched. For of course you know that experts in these matters laugh at anyone who tries in discussion to cut unity itself, and they do not accept this. But if you chop it into bits, they multiply them, taking care for fear the unit should ever appear not a unit, but a lot of little pieces. Very true. And then suppose, uh, then suppose Glaucon, that someone should say to them, hey, numbers indeed. You people surprise me. What are you talking about? Numbers in which all of your ones are equal to each to each and not a bit different and have within them no parts? See, none of them can be thicker than right. my fingers. What do you think? Yeah, it, they it's lightness, right? They can be more right? or less. They have to be, to be exactly the same. Yeah, if you have no two things that are... Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. So, all of these, yeah. see... They have to be or see the right way to write numbers is this way. Right, everything's over one. Yeah. A whole. The whole. It's the, the measure. Whole. Right. So someone can't sneak by when you're doing <laughs> this. Because it's no longer. So in reality, this is the right way to write numbers. You're signifying by that, that this must be a whole. And therefore, within it must be these two all the same, taken together, yeah. no fractions. So the one is the nest. <coughs> so what are you doing? Oneness, oneness, that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's still playing with the same theme. Yeah, go ahead. And just one thing, yeah, people don't walk around doing this, yeah. right? I mean, so you asked a moment ago, like, oh, it's such an obvious problem. So, like, no, and, it, this, and in the same way, this can only be things of the mind. Mm -hmm. Which a lot of people tend to not really care about yeah. sometimes. Okay. Go further. Just this, I think, that they are speaking of what can only be conceived in the mind which it is impossible to deal with in any other way. You see then, my friend, that really, this seems to be the study we need since it clearly compels the soul to use pure reason in order to find out the truth. So it most certainly does. Very well. You this have is an example then of pure reasoning. So we have to, add, in English, we have to stick in. Ness. Ness. Reason Ness. Reasoning, reason Ness. Go ahead. Uh, very well. You have seen already that natural calculators are sharp, for the most part, in all studies. And the slow ones have only to be educated and practiced in this to become sharper than before. Every one of them, even if they get no other benefit. That is true. And besides, I don't believe you could easily find studies which give more hard work than this in learning and in practice. Uh, in practice, not many at least. No, indeed. For, these re for all of these reasons, then, we must not omit this study, but the best natures must be trained in it. I agree. Then, 
let us take that as point one settled. Let us, oh, was that me? I said, let us see secondly, if what comes next to this is proper for us. What is that? Do you mean geometry? Huh? Yeah. Geometry. So this guy from Arizona said, Brooke. the I problem say Brooklyn, this whole sure. thing is the lack of nests. Huh. Uh, but is that in the Greek? The group met him, and by the way, they hung him. <laughs> but is that in the Greek? I mean, English, I understand. Since they lacked hemlock, they figured they'd lynch him. Yeah, it's Arizona after all. Changing the English language. I, I agree that this problem exists in the English language, but does it exist in the Greek? Well, yeah. more or less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There are suffixes which will allow you to do nests in Greek. No, I, I, I guess I, that's what I'm hoping for. I guess my, so I guess the way I'm looking at it is that there's a certain way of unfolding in terms of functioning with respect to reasoning if you want to return to first hypothesis or however it unfolds. And I actually do this. Like, I, I look at qualities, I look at uh, creations from ideas, and I, I say beautiness. I say existness uh, in order to help me figure this out as I unfold. And so my, my question is, is it already implicit in the Greek language? Like, you don't have to do that. Because I find myself in English having to make these distinctions. Like, the, I'm very much with the, the friend that said, you know, let's put ness after everything where, where it's supposed to be. So in Greek, do they have a ness everywhere it's supposed to be? Well, there's the logos and a pure reasoning, and if you follow it, I think you can get to the same kinds of conclusions that we're getting to. Oh. And, and there are terms that allow you, that help you along the way. Right. So, so the, the, the problem, beauty of the language. Sorry. Go ahead. The problem is that there, just like there is in English, there are different ways to arrive at what you would call the substantive. Like Greek is famous for its article. The good, right? Right. Beauty, it's beauty as a substantive, as an idea, is totalon, formed in exactly the same mm -hmm. way. Yet there are terms like um, agathotephos, and which means goodness. There is like a ness ending. But, but I thought your question was directed at, is there the same kind of uneven application? And I think the answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. There is an uneven application. There is not a consistent ness, 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 ness. Okay. Which, to lend to your point, I think is what, if well, I understand see. correctly, what you guys, sorry to interrupt you, no. so what you guys are doing with the whole Parmenides and the self, right? Trying to figure out all these reflexives versus... Uh, no. No. Going back, though, to what you were asking, what is the goal of this, I think he read that it's that this leads to truth, and that the, this is a method of pure reasoning in order to reach mm -hmm, the truth, mm -hmm, and to ask the question when after all is the one itself is for the goal of truth. I take it about what is the one. I would Nash. like, yeah, that was a good, where was that quote again? Do one. you know what she's, because no. I do remember one that. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, what page? Thank you, guys. Oh, we're not going all night? I thought this was a sleepover. Yes, you got it right here. Yes, right. One second. Uh, I think, yeah, 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 we got it, we got it. I think it's like 522C, maybe? Two? 522C to... About 526 or 524? No, 525D. 525D. C, D. That's it, she got it. Dude, that part that she was in. Shoot. Three, three, Oh, we have different books. I